and people don't like that because they don't like the truth. But the truth is the only thing that'll give you the life you want. Till I collapse, I'll be moving too fast. Got my foot up on the gas, full throttle till I crash. All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the Grow Your Moving Company podcast. Today, we've got a very special episode broadcasting from the Lion's Den. I've got Andy Elliott, the number one sales trainer in the world. He's blowing up onto the scene. And I'm going to be completely honest, I did not know who Andy Elliott was until about July. And you came to Tampa for the Tampa Takeover. John, a friend of mine, a moving company owner, was like, you guys got to come to this. I was like, I'm all about sales. I love going to these types of things. He's like, but who's Andy Elliott? He goes, look up a video on YouTube. One video on YouTube, and I was sold. I was there. And now here we are. So thank you, Andy. Thank you for hey, coming I, on. I always say this, man. I say, listen, don't ever get the – don't ever – underestimate the opportunity to self-develop. You never know what's going to happen. Look, I've gone to bad trainings. Um, even the bad trainings, I still learned something. And occasionally I've gone to a really good training. I went to a seminar or an event or something where I walked in one way and I left another, right? And it's cool, man. We talk about the power of proximity. There's 8 billion people in this world. There are some people that you can get around that will totally and completely transform and change your life. And a lot of these people, the reason why they know how to change your life fast is because they've changed their own life, right? You know, I wasn't a born leader, right? I messed up. I had bad leaders. I did wrong things. I missed sales to learn how to not miss sales, to learn how to be a great leader, to learn how to be a great person, because now I play both sides. So I just want to say, um, you know, it was awesome meeting you in Tampa. Obviously, it doesn't take very long to change your life. It really doesn't, man. It's a simple decision. When we met, you're like, dude, I'm going to go to another level. Um, you probably got inspired, right, by like saying, hey, dude, I want to do more. Or you were probably going to do more eventually. But then you're like, you know what, man, I'm going to speed this shit up and I'm going to do more now. Yeah. You know what I mean? And since I met you, we've totally remodeled our entire sales team. We remodeled our office. We fired like half, pretty much almost the whole team. We, I think we kept one person, hired on a whole bunch of new people, and we have the whole office right now doing push-ups, sit-ups, leg lifts. They're, they're like, just they're they're exci they're excited. Look, listen, what he's saying is he fired his employees, and then he hired a team. Okay, so if you're going to listen to what he said, because a lot of people are like, oh, man, so you met him, you go home, and he fired your people. No, dude, they, they, they weren't his people. See, because him as a leader, he, he, he wants a team. And, and I'm, I'm, I'm guessing that your leadership skills also elevated a lot after that training. So when you went back, you were a different person. And now when you're talking to these employees about this new way that we're going to do things, they're looking at you like, dude, what are we doing? And you're like, hey, I changed. And then they're like, we don't want to change. Well, listen, dude, when you change, there's going to be conflict. So you got to decide when you're making a change and you are changing, like, are you going to revert back to the old you because people don't like it? Or are you going to go find new people that are okay with the new change? Right? And that's what you did. You leaned into this new idea, this new ideology of how you wanted things to be. You wanted your team to be fire breathing dragons. You wanted people to be bought into the culture. You wanted everybody fired up about, you know, like, like there doesn't have to be work and then home. You wanted people when they come to work to, to kick ass and to go home better people to their families because their work is so awesome, right? And by the way, like that's what you did. You actually created a culture in which people love coming to work. And most people don't love coming to work. And it sounds like your people do. So you had to get rid of the old people with the old ideology. And by the way, you said one of them changed or one of them stayed with you. That one, when you're, when you're like, hey, we're going to come to work. We're going to have more energy. We're going to have more fire. We're going to do big shit. You know, that person was probably like, yeah. And you're like, all right, you're staying. You know, but the other ones that are like, wait, what are we going to do? You're like, listen, hey, by the way. Those people, it's not like they're unemployed now. They can go work for normal companies because he's not a normal person, right? And normality and conforming is not what we're interested in anymore. So you're, you're on a self-development journey right now that's insane. You're growing really fast. I can tell it's changing your own life and your own company, which is why now you're so inspired to push this into other businesses and change their lives, right? Absolutely. That's and what I love about you. we started the 6 a.m. six-pack club. So your video that went viral about if you don't have a six-pack, you can't work for me, started circulating like right before the, the conference you put on in Tampa. Yeah. I sent this out to a few of my friends. I was like, I'm going to see this guy next week. And seeing their responses were a little bit mixed. Some were like, oh, wow, like why would you want to go put yourself through that? Some of them were like, let's go. Let's get fired up. And it, it was interesting. And so, so right after that seminar, we started. It's a system. standard yeah. is all it is. Yeah. And, and you know what it means. You got people that work for you that don't have six-packs. But you, but you, you have people that are, that are pushing to be greater. You know, think about this. You have a moving company, right? right? 
You have, you, have, you have a business. Anybody watching this has a business. Do you want your clients to be treated great? Do you want your clients to be taken care of? Is your brand important? You know, you're on your shirt, right? It's the two college brothers, right? How long, how long have you guys been in business? Over 11 years. 11 years it's taken you to build that brand and that business. Dude, listen, man. That brand and that business, 11 years, we need people to really care about themselves and really have high standards to take care of customers. Customers are expecting when they pay us good money to take care of them, for us to have high standards and give them the best service they've ever imagined. Matter of fact, such good service that it ruins the value of money for them. All right, put it on the calendar, November 28th, 9 a.m. Mountain Standard Time. I'm going to be releasing the news that's going to shake the world. If you've ever wanted to work with me, if you've ever wanted to be a part of my team, if you've ever wanted to impact the world, change people's lives, and make more money, I'm going to be releasing something that's going to stream through the world and change millions of people's lives, and I need you. So. Be on the lookout, November 28th, 9 a.m. Mountain Standard Time. I will be going live on YouTube, Instagram, TikTok, Facebook, every place I can possibly find. I'm gonna be streaming live, so you need to set your calendars now. And if you show up live on the call, I'm gonna be dropping one of my courses that I'll be giving away to all of you who show for free. So even if you want a free course, show up and you wanna change your life. See you on the call. And if we can't get our people to raise their standards and care more about themselves, how in the hell can they care about people more? So, so the six pack of your fire deal, like the reason why people don't understand it is because when you start saying that, they immediately say, well, he don't like me. No, we actually like everybody. We actually just want you to raise your standards. And whether you ever achieve a six pack or not, what it means is achieving more maxing out your potential right yeah and it was interesting too because when we started doing the 6 a.m six pack club we saw who showed up and we we do it every single tuesday and thursday during the week we have a fitness challenge now that we do throughout the month our sales manager the other day said we're no longer a moving company we're a health and fitness company that happens to be in moving and that dude, that, that so was cool, powerful man. yeah dude and, that is that is so cool man imagine this okay the families the families of the people right that work for you guys dude their families have to have such a ripple effect of a husband or a wife going home i mean the energy when you take care of yourself uh, the mood that you're in they've got to bring more love to their kids they got to bring more love to their wife they got to bring more love to themselves right like like so many people they listen to this dude and they're not understanding it or getting it you know when i met him you know he's on fire and when I met him this time again, he's totally recreated. He's a different human being. He's a different person. I always say the eyes are the window to the soul. I see a lot of people, they're alive, but they're really dead inside. Okay, and that means they've stopped growing. There's that old saying, evolve or die. And a lot of people aren't evolving. So when you hear this six pack or you're fired, I mean, anybody could be like, man, I'm going to lean into that. And I know this is going to be uncomfortable, but I'm going to lean into that and I'm going to evolve and I'm going to become a better person and I'm going to bring good stuff to my family and I'm going to make a bigger paycheck at work. I'm going to look in the mirror and I'm going to like who I, who I see like guys, like this is it. And by the way, you may say, well, what does this have to do about making more, more money in business? It has everything to do with making more money in business. Do like I said, employees will work for you for a paycheck, but a team, they'll work for you with blood, sweat, and tears, and they'll run through a wall for you. And we were just talking about that downstairs. Yeah, and, and everything you said downstairs, I made like three pages of notes in like the 15 minutes that we chatted. But can you tell me a little bit more about why fitness translates into business success, sales success, leadership success? Yeah, so, um, so this goes back, I've told this story a lot, but when I'm in great shape, um, I'm a better father to my children. Okay, I got three kids. I love them to death. I am a better father when I'm in better shape. Now, look, I don't know about you. Maybe, maybe you can be really out of shape and you like bring extra special energy to your family. Okay, cool. Hey, that works for you. Let me tell you what works for me. When I'm in my best shape, the man I am to my children, I'm like, I'm like this really cool dad because I really like me. Um, also, you know, I learned that uh, I'm a lot better to my wife. I treat her really good, you know, um, and I'm going to say something. Our sex life is through the roof when I'm taking care of myself. And I learned when me and my wife have sex every night, we honestly don't disconnect from each other. We stay really close. I know a lot of people that sleep in the same bed. They're miles apart and they're disconnected. 
you know, I feel like, you know, God brought us together. We're married. We have sex every night. We stay really close. And when I'm taking care of myself, I mean, dude, we have sex every night because I like me. Um, when I take care of myself, it made my wife want to start taking care of herself. I find her more attractive. She finds herself more attracted. She wants to be in bed with me more. Like, like that's, that's just one of the great things. Um, about this. So I treat her better. Also, I carry myself differently, um, not only at home, but also in business. Um, I see myself differently. I feel, I feel differently about myself. I'm, I'm more certain about who I am. I always say boys are confident and men are certain. Like I feel like a real man and I feel like certain about where I'm going. Um, I, I feel like I have a backbone um, when I'm in shape. I feel like like I can be a leader, you know, leader, right, is about self-leadership. Like any leader doesn't get to lead a team until they self-lead themselves. I, I don't see my team following me when I'm not taking care of myself. And I've, I've always been a leader. So like I'm telling you, if you want to build a team or you want to build a company or do something big, like you're going to need to be in great shape. And then it, it took me understanding this, it, really my wife. Okay, so if anybody's watching this, your wife, my wife tells me the truth. Um, she doesn't sugarcoat anything. She gives me the cold, hard truth. And she she just doesn't care if I feel good about what she's saying. She's very direct, right? There was a time when I was 39 years old, okay? Now, I've been in shape at different points in my life. Me and my wife have been together 17 years. She's seen me boom in business, boom with her, boom with the kids. And then also she's seen me fall, right? She's seen me restart. She's seen me make bad decisions. She's seen me backslide. You know, see our wives see us go up and down. And she noticed a trend. That the times that I was in the best shape and I put myself first, now hear me out here, I put myself first. I was taking care of myself. I beat the sun up, went to the gym, was eating right. During those times, me and her were the most happiest. The kids were the closest to me. We made the most money. I had the best team. Like, but I liked me more. I was more positive. I wasn't negative. My perspective in life was really good. And then she noticed that whenever I got so busy and I was chasing all these things and I put more on my plate than I knew what to do with, um, or, or I just got distracted, I would stop working out. All these things would start to separate. So one day my wife walks up, I'm 39 years old and she reaches behind me and grabs my love handle. And you know, like she squeezes it and like eh, grabs it. And she goes, you getting a little comfortable? And people say, oh man, I, what a mean woman. No, 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 no. My wife knows how to trigger me. Now, I got mad. I got pissed off, which I'm glad. Because anytime I've gotten pissed off, I've built something beautiful. Okay? Like sometimes you need to get pissed off. But she goes, you getting a little comfortable? And I turn around and go, dude, what's your problem? And she goes, I don't have a problem. She goes, I see you walk through this door every day after work. And I see your eyes. And I can tell when you're fulfilled. And I can tell when you're not. She goes, you're forgetting what all this is about. You got one life, Andy. Who do you want to be? I said, what do you mean? She goes, what is success to you? Define it. Okay. Is success to you being out of shape or in shape? And I always said, well, what about money? And she's like, Andy, you think I care about money? I want to see my husband happy. I want to see you fulfilled. I married you not for money. I would have married a rich doctor. I married you, right, because I thought you were going to bring massive value to us and we were going to have the happiest life ever. This isn't about money. I want to see the greatest version of my husband. When is Andy 2.0 going to be made? And I said, damn, man, you know, like, like I got I to gotta figure this out. I'm like, do you not love me? Are you not happy? She goes, you're totally missing it. You're going to stick right now to the fact that I called you out for not being your best instead of understanding that I give a fuck about you more than anyone else. And I know when you play your best, what you're going to bring to the table. So you want to play the victim? Go ahead. Okay. Play the victim. Let's keep shit the same. Or you can make a decision to understand what your wife is saying. You have gotten comfortable. You need to go become the best version of yourself for the company that you work for, from the, for the team that you lead, for your kids that look up to you, and for the wife that wants to admire you as the husband and is expecting you to lead the family. I do not care about money. I would rather have the best version of you and be broke and us be happy than have money and you look in the mirror and hate who you are. And I can tell right now you are not happy with who you want to be. And at that point, I said, all right, here's the decision I made. I said, I'm going to choose health over money. 
It was the first time in my life that I chose health over money. It was so awkward. For the first 90 days, it was like learning to, to walk again. I had to start eating clean. I was meal prepping. I was starving at night. I would, I'm a snacker. So I want to dig in the refrigerator. Now listen, my family's 350 to 500 pounds. Wow. Okay, so like I'm just telling you, like people are like, oh, you're in good shape. Dude, I have no genes. I have no genetic. Dude, my family has the most awfulest bodies you've ever seen. So like I'm trying to recreate a new bloodline. I'm trying to create a new generation. I'm trying to create new genes for my kids. Dude, I, I believe in total recreation, but it took my wife to piss me off. Then she, um, Tim Grover always says this, either go into hell, right, and visit hell, or hell will visit you. So I decided to visit hell. And to me, it was waking up at 5 a.m., which I hated. Um, to me, it was not watching TV at night and going to bed by 11 so I could get my six hours because I knew I was going to work out. But once I created this 90-day pattern, man, Dude, I was on fire. Dude, I honestly was running through walls. I was breaking records. I mean, dude, me and my wife were thriving. The kids were close to me. I was bringing good energy to my family. Forget about money for a minute. I was bringing energy to my family that I had never brought. And the craziest thing is, is I started to feel like I was alive again. Again, there's a difference between being alive and, and, and living. I started to feel alive. I started to feel on fire. My energy started to go through the roof. Everybody's like, damn, man, look at all this energy. Dude, a guy walked in. He's like, damn, dude, you're looking good. You're leaning down, man. Oh, was that a bicep vein? I was like, oh, shit, man. I was like, I was like feeling this. You know what I mean? And then, dude, I just went psycho. I'm a person, I believe in something called total immersion, which means like if I believe in it, I total immerse into it right? My wife, when I married her, no matter what woman comes across my, my plate, I don't care. No matter what woman walks in front of me, I don't give a shit. If they do shit, she won't do it. I don't care. That's my girl. I'm with her till I die. Okay. When I'm loyal to my people, I'm loyal to my people. I mean, like whatever I'm in, I'm in. And I'm just that way. Like I'm obsessive once I get into something, right? Well, now that I got into that fitness and I saw all these results that like, like I've wanted my whole life, and it took my wife to piss me off. And a lot of people, they, they, they would hear this story and they're like, oh, your wife, man, I can't believe that. She's such a bad woman. No, dude, my wife, her job is to bring out the best man in me. That's her job. Her job is to tell me the truth and never lie to me. I was getting comfortable. Once I got over the pride, the ego, and the entitlement, and I looked in the mirror, I realized that I was living in an alien's body. That is not f***ing me. That is not who I want to become. And, th and by the way, I'm an example to my kids, okay? Not only my team, but, but I still am. I'm 44 at this time. Now, I was like, dude, I'm in my 40s. I'm going to go back to being in my 20s. Like, I'm going to recreate my life. I'm going to restart my life. And, dude, listen, I just have gotten more obsessed with it. I eat clean food. I work out hard five days a week. Um, dude, it's not only changed my life, it's changed my team's life. It's changed our business's life. It's changed, it's changed everything. We built a nine figure business in three years. And I would tell you, if you ask me what is the number one cause of all of it, when I tell you this, you're going to think that I'm lying. It was staying physically fit to keep myself always growing and out self developing everybody else. Um, when I work out, whether I feel like it or don't, and I do it, it makes me a different person. Um, I, I don't know about you, but when I don't work out, I feel like I have a cloud over my brain. Um, you know, like there was a time one time, and obviously I get on stage, I speak all the time, and I didn't, I didn't work out in the morning because we had like a, like, a, like a six, it was like a 6.30 speech. I got all the, it was super early, man. So I didn't go to the gym. I didn't get off the plane until one in the morning. Um, it was freezing cold outside. I didn't know where the local gym was. There wasn't a gym in the hotel. It's just every excuse, right? I should have ran. I should have done something. But I said, I'm just going to go afterwards. Dude, I felt like I did the worst presentation, the worst job I'd ever done. I felt stupid. I felt dumb. And, and I, I hated the way I felt. And I said, dude, I can never, ever expect me to give my best without hitting the gym before I start, without waking myself out, without, and I, I say beating the demons off me, like, like getting the negativity off me. Like when I work on me and I put my phone to the side and I work out and I'm eating clean food, like, like dude, like I'm just a good person. So um, anyways, I would say that, that fitness, 
allowed all these other things to happen. And my brain, I'm all into like the law of attraction and like manifestation and like, I believe if I can see it, if I can manifest it, I'll get it. And so will you. And that shit is real. Just so everybody understands, like when you manifest something, it's totally real. I have a really hard time manifesting a brighter future or a, a bigger anything or something greater happening or helping more people when I'm not taking care of myself, it's really hard for me to take care of anybody else. I feel like I'm a fraud. I feel like, I feel like I'm the, I'm that leader that, or that manager that people hate that boss that tells people to do stuff that they're not doing. And so like, I just want to make sure that so people will take me serious and understand that I have the right intentions and I have the right heart about helping them that like, I need to make sure that I'm taking care of me and so that they don't need to look at me and go, hey, like, is this guy disciplined? Like, I want them to look at me and be like, I know this guy's disciplined. I, l listen, I wanna say one more thing about this and you can ask anything you want, but I wanna say, you can see, because I'm, I'm giving a lot of explanation here. So if anybody hasn't made the choice to go in, maybe this will help them. All right, put it on the calendar, November 28th, 9 a.m. Mountain Standard Time. I'm gonna be releasing the news that's going to shake the world. If you've ever wanted to work with me, if you've ever wanted to be a part of my team, if you've ever wanted to impact the world, change people's lives and make more money, I'm going to be releasing something that's going to stream through the world and change millions of people's lives, and I need you. So be on the lookout, November 28th, 9 a.m. Mountain Standard Time. I will be going live on YouTube, Instagram, TikTok, Facebook, every place I can possibly find. I'm gonna be streaming live, so you need to set your calendars now. And if you show up live, on the call, I'm gonna be dropping one of my courses that I'll be giving away to all of you who show for free. So even if you want a free course, show up and you wanna change your life, see you on the call. You know, everybody knows when you see somebody that has a six pack that's in really good shape at any age, the, the, the discipline and the diet and the, and, and the work that it takes to get a six pack. Okay, like you don't just get one, right? Like you, you have to really earn it. You have to exercise, you have to work out, you have to do cardio, you have to diet, you know, food, you know bodies are made in the kitchen, which means you got to say no to this stuff, which means you're good at choice making, you're good at making decision making, you know, you had you could eat, you, you know, you had to not eat too late, like, dude, like all these things have to happen for you to get that body. So when I see someone that's in really good shape, if I'm going to do business with them, I'm immediately saying to myself, if they're in good shape, like this person can hold their word. This person most likely is going to do what they say they're going to do because they couldn't carry a body like that otherwise. Now, maybe I need a little more information, but just from what I see tells me a lot about the way that you'll execute with me. Okay. So I just want to say I, common sense, common sense. I see that. And it's like, it's like when you go to the doctor and a nurse comes up and she's 350 pounds and she's like, oh, your heart rate, you know, your blood pressure. You're like, dude, what, what are we talking about? You know what I'm saying? Hey, hey, and I'm not knocking her, okay? But it makes it, but, but if, if, that, if that nurse, male or female, was in great shape and I would look at them and then they're telling me about my health, you know, I'd be like, oh man, like, tell me more. And I would be like, I'm gonna do whatever you say because I wanna look like you or like I wanna be like you or like you're someone that I can take advice from. Um, hey, I'm a teacher. Uh, I've been in sales my whole life. In sales, I'm an educator. In sales, we educate people. When we close someone or somebody calls about our moving company and we say, hey, we just want you to know we're not like most people. Let me explain why I'm going to educate you. Okay, I'm going to explain to you, number one, what we do, how this works from A to Z, why we're different than everybody else, and how when this is done, the only regret you'll have is that you didn't use us on all the other moves for the rest of your life. And I assure you, the greatest compliment you could ever give me is sending me a referral, which is one of your friends or family that will be moving in the future. And we're going to do such a good job. I, we're going to do such a good job I promise you that you're going to want to pay these compliments every single day to anybody that you know that will move for the rest of your life. So our goal isn't just to do one transaction with you. We are a relational moving company. Relational. We want this relationship with you and all your friends and all your family. And we know that we don't get what we want. We get what we earn. And we are going to earn the right for you to refer us to more friends and family. So we love you. We want to tell you thank you for reaching out. We do not disappoint. We take this very serious. Everybody does what they do in life. We move. 
we move. Our goal is to take the pressure off the client. Our goal is to ensure that all these things that you have in your life, all of these beautiful pieces of property that you have that we're transporting from A to B, that they get there, you don't have to worry about. It's stress-free. They go from here to there without you having to even think. And then for a little fee, we'll make sure that we take all the concern out of it. That's what we do. Like, we're the, we're, we're the best at it. Okay, we have 110% customer satisfaction. I physically will oversee this entire job. Our people that come and do your moving and work, they are vetted, heavily vetted. We pay them more money. I'm just letting you know, oh, you're a little bit more money. I know we are. We pay our people more money that are going to be moving your life belongings. Look, I need you to understand this, okay? I can put an ad in the paper right now, need movers for $10 an hour, and you can pay me whatever right now, but when stuff gets broken, you're going to be pissed. You do not ever want to go at the lowest price. I don't like cheap stuff to you. No, and the stuff that you probably have that you're moving, it's worth moving, so it's probably not cheap, and you probably want to make sure that, because it, it means a lot to you that it gets there without being broken. Am I right? Okay, so listen to me. You don't want cheap. I pay my movers more money than everybody, so they give a service that you've never gotten from anybody. Okay, listen to me. That's what we do. That's what we stand for. We don't like cheap. We love a great service, and, and all the stuff that you have that, that's your belongings, we treat it like it's our belongings. When my guys move your stuff, dude, they're moving it like it's their stuff. We take this personal, okay? So if you're looking for cheap, it's not us. If you're looking for the best, that is us, and that's what we stand for. And this needs to be every phone call, but people can't be this way if they don't care about themselves. And by the way, you'll notice when I'm saying this, I, I'm saying it with my heart. I'm not even speaking with my mouth. I'm saying it with my heart. Because, like, I'm present in life. I'm taking care of myself. I'm alive. I'm awake. I didn't just answer the phone. Yeah, what's going on? Oh, let me give you an estimate. Oh, too much? Okay, well, let us know. Or right, what do we need to do? It's like, dude, what are we doing? Are we growing a business? If we're growing a business, you want your people alive inside of your business, which is what you're doing. So that was a long explanation on health. But, but you're doing it right now, and you're doing it with your team. And I know the ripple effect outside of money is going to be massive. But the ripple effect with money, massive, massive, man. You could triple your prices if your whole staff that worked for you was in shape. Yeah, and I noticed that we came and toured the, the Lion's Den a few days ago, and every single person in this building made me feel like the most important person in the world to them. And I didn't even know m almost all these people, and now I feel like they're my friends. When I come in today, they're like, hey, what's up, Wade? How's it going, Wade? Oh, you're Wade? Like, it's, it's awesome. Well, see, and that's called onboarding. Okay, their goal is that when they see you is they want to onboard you, not only to the Elliott group, but to their name, their brand. Each one of them, they have their own individual name, their own individual brand, and they represent the main brand, which is the Elliott group. So when they meet you, they're onboarding you to understand that they care about you. Look, our guys have one, one goal is to show you that when they meet, and they're not fake, okay, they're real, but they, and, and they mean this, talk to them and look in their eyes, they care about you, their goal, okay, is to care about you more than you care about yourself. And if you care about yourself a lot, they're gonna try to outdo you. They're gonna try to out-energy you. They're gonna try to out-love you. And, and they're, gonna, they're gonna try to, and, and there, there's, a, there's a selling skill called reciprocity, right? which is like give first. And that's the reason why I was like, hey, what can I get you to drink? Hey, what can I do for you? Hey, what do you need, man? Hey, let me give you a tour around the office. Hey, they just want to give you, give you, give you, give you. Have you ever noticed a lot of salespeople have commission breath and it's like take, 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 take? Dude, our guys are give, 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 give because if you play that game, you'll never even have to ask. Dude, I was so good at selling whenever I sold, and I still sell, but there, or whenever I sold, that literally I gave so much, people would just stop me and say, all right, Andy, how does this work? How can we get this going? Like, I wouldn't even have to ask, so guys, what do you think? You want to wrap it up? No, they're like, Andy, we're good. Now, how does this work? How can we pay you? Can I, can I wire the money? Can I put it on a card? What, what's the best way to handle this? Like, like, that is a total different style of selling, but it's called reciprocity selling. Okay, and the only way to do it is by out carrying the client um, and also believing in your product really good. A, a second side of that, you said you saw my people and they're just so loving and so nice, so caring, but also they believe in the company. They believe in what we do. They believe that every time that you say hi to somebody that you're changing their life. You know what's crazy? Because I know this is a, you know, a moving podcast, but you know, like how many people just sound like they don't even care 
when they're when they're when they're doing the work or or they're just transactional. Okay, if I was calling and I was going to be moving and I, and I was getting, I know that it I could move it myself. Okay, which is going to be a bitch. Okay, and it probably is going to suck and it's going to take me lots of days and I don't have time, but I'm going to have to make time. And I'm guessing there's going to be this ten thousand dollar quote that I'm like, God, dog, I knew it was going to be that much. But if that person answers the phone, man, and they say, listen, our number one goal is this. When you move, 99% of the time, it's a nightmare. The most important stuff to you breaks. You spend all this time moving. Your husband ends up throwing his back out. It's a nightmare problem. It caused fights, divorces, problems. I've seen it all in the moving space, okay? Our goal is to take all the pressure off you and your family. Where do we need to pick it up? Where is it going? You're going to go to that location. And you're going to see all of your stuff there. We're going to wrap it the way you want it. We're going to pack it the way you want it. We're going to take care of it better than you would take care of it. If that's what you're looking for, ma'am, sir, that's all we want to do. We charge a little more money than most, but we also pay our people more money. We're not interested in making a lot of profits. Most people don't talk about it. I'll be happy to talk about it. We don't want to make more profits. We want to pay for better, high-quality people that are better vetted, that take better care of your stuff. If somebody breaks something that we're moving with you, we take it very personal. Now, we have all the insurance, the liabilities, and all that stuff for moving to make sure everything's covered, but we take it personal. We've done 176 moves in the last week, and we haven't broke one thing. Listen, we're on fire. We care about moving more than anyone else, so I'm so glad you called today. But if the information that I'm telling you that, and, and what I'm telling you we're going to do is what you're looking for, well, you found it. Spending a couple extra bucks is worth it. If the juice is worth the squeeze the buckle down, spend a couple more bucks so you can get your stuff in the house there, save your family, you and the pressure and the headache and the problems, then I would say pass go. It's worth it. And I can probably move you guys to the front of the line and get this taken care of. You sound like an amazing person. You sound like a, you got a great family. And uh, congratulations on the move. Whatever's going on, we just want to make it seamless and easy. And we want to make no headaches a part of it. When it's all said and done, I want you to say, my God. If moving was that easy, we would have done it more often. It's always been hell. Well, it isn't going to be hell with us, okay? And I'm going to show you with this first transaction how great we are so that in the future, if you decide to do it again, you can call me back, okay? That is this new era individual. That is onboarding them to our brand. Nobody can have that conversation with someone if they don't like themselves and if they're not self-developing in their own life to want to bring self-developing to someone else's life. Hey, listen, by the way, did I just sell you? No, I really coached you through the process of how our company does business with people like you. I just coached you, man. I tell my guys, I'm like, guys, yeah, you guys sell, but you're not salespeople. You're coaches. Who makes more money, a salesperson or a coach? A coach? Coaches make the money. Salespeople, right? Our, our guys, listen, take this, understand this. Salespeople, of course we sell because we're coaches. We're selling you on this is the best way to do it. We're, we're influencing. We're persuading you. We're painting pictures. We're telling stories. We're articulating our words to make you understand what we want you to understand and take you where we want to take you. But we're coaching you along the way. Okay? We're not high pressure selling you. Look, we just want you to do what's right. Sp spend less money. Get a bad job. Spend a little more money. Take all the stress away. But the person that's talking to the client, that person represents the entire company. 11 years. 11 years you guys have been doing this. Whoever answering that phone, man, they have got to outcare everyone. I, I love that. I think one of the biggest struggles that we as moving company owners have is is getting the actual people that are doing the moves on board. You know, moving, usually you end up as a mover because it might be your only option. It's tough work, it's not sexy, uh, you're sweating, you usually don't make a ton of money, uh, it's usually an hourly job, even if you are paying the highest in, the, in, in your market in the industry. How do we as owners lead the charges with the front lines that are going into people's homes and handling the stuff to be able to have that, that experience, that onboarding experience cycle all the way down so that the salespeople can back up what, what they're selling. It is a daily conversation, just like a football coach has to a football team before they take the, the field. All right, Wade, today we've got a lot of people that paid a lot of money and that trusted our company, okay, to do something that they don't think that's gonna get done right. Now, Wade, let me say that again. They're paying us to do something that they don't wanna do and, and they still yet believe 
that we can't execute it and do it right and properly because they've been burned and let down before. Today, Wade, you're going to be given an opportunity to prove that we are the best. Now, I want to tell you something, okay? I see, I see, I see a lot of potential in you. I see you going far in our company. Okay, you may start as a mover, but I don't see you ending as a mover. Now, you may say, Andy, I love moving so much, and you may never want to change, but wait, you're capable of doing whatever, and I believe in you. So I know this. I worked when I was younger flipping burgers. I was the best burger flipper in that entire place. One day I was going to run the joint, okay? But you know what? Flipping burgers, when I did it, I did it the best. I want you to know this. You moving stuff, you are the front line of our company. You're more important than the CEO. You're more important than the CFO. You're more important than me as the owner. You're more important than all of us. If you move this load today and you don't do a good job, our company goes out of business. I don't know if you've ever wanted to be trusted. I don't know if you've ever wanted to be. Have you? Yeah. You're more trusted than, than, I, than I can explain. If you'll go out today and you'll make sure every time you pick up something, every time you put it down, every time you move something, I want you to think about what I said. I trust you. Our company counts on you and you're the most important person in the company. Do you believe me? That's all I want you to do. I want you to know how important you are to me. I want you to know how important you are to the company. I want you to know that when we sold the job and we told the clients that we were going to be the best, we knew that you were going to be the one doing the work, or all you guys were. Okay, with that being said, I want, us to under, I want you to understand something. I don't care what title you have. We don't have any titles in this company. We're all a team. They're making the calls, right? We're investing the money. Some people are doing marketing, and some people are doing the moving. We're all a team. And if one of us doesn't do our job right, all of us sink. Okay? So I want to tell you, you mean a lot to us. Your job's important. We couldn't do what we do without you. Thank you. And I don't see you being a mover your entire life unless you want to be. So give it your best. Do the best job it's ever been. And the future looks bright. And I just want to say thank you. Are you having this conversation one-on-one? -on -one, I can or have it one-on-one -on -one with the team. I could have it with 10 people right now. I could say, let me tell you guys why you're the most important part of our company. And I'm saying, you guys are the most important part of our company. We could not do this without you. See, people forget, man, just because pe people, li listen, listen, L let's get this out of the way. A lot of moving companies and companies in general, but moving companies, because these people are doing the job that nobody else wants to do. That doesn't mean that it's a bad job. And by the way, who told them that it was the job that no one else wanted to do? Okay, like, like who's telling these people that? Dude, I would say, guys, every day, people are looking to do things that have purpose and matter. When you guys move someone's family, that's purpose and matter. When you pick up that bed, you don't know if that bed was her dad's 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 bed and how much that means. You don't know. So we got to pretend that everything is ancient and sacred. It means everything to everybody. Everything that we touch. Can you guys stay in that state? All right, that's cool. All right, now next, what are we going to do? We're going to talk about who are you guys going to become, right? If you guys do a great job moving with me for a year or two, and you keep your standards high and you show that you can be counted on as a mover and you understand how the mechanics of our company work, which everything is about moving, dude, you guys can move up and you guys can lead a team. You guys can run a team. You guys may move to the sell side position at any point in time if you want to. You might be leading the team or managing. I don't know. But I know the way that you go out today will determine what happens tomorrow. The decisions you make today shapes your future tomorrow. Our company's growing. We're opening new locations every day. I'm wanting to bring people from internally inside the company up and out to new locations and different stuff. Like, guys, listen to me. The way that you work today, the way that I can count on you will let me know where you fit tomorrow. Now, listen to me, guys. Do, we, do, we, do you believe in the company? Do you believe in what we do? When we tell people we're the best, were we lying to them or are we the best? And who's the only person that can deliver the experience to show them that we're the best? You guys. Okay? So I'm going to say it. And I'm going to say it one last time. You're the most important people in the company, period. That's it. I care about you. I love you. We have no titles. I'm grateful for you. Go out there and give it your all today, and let's show people how much we love them. Guys, like, this is a conversation every day. People say, oh, my God, a moving company doing that? Don't do it. Go out of business. Fine. Anybody who's listening who wants to grow and be a badass, listen up, own the market share, take over the world. Everybody wants to move. The reason why people have stopped believing in moving companies is because of amateurs. People don't like salespeople, right? You know why? Because most of them suck.
and they're amateurs. But if you've met a good one, they take the pressure off you and they actually help you make a decision. Okay, remember, 10% of the people will buy from everybody. 10% of the people ain't buying from nobody. And then 80% of the people need help making a decision, which means they need a salesperson involved. But the problem is most salespeople suck. So since the salespeople suck, and anytime we've dealt with one, they do a shitty job, and we know that they're amateurs, and we know that pros aren't out there, well, we hate salespeople. They're not saying they hate salespeople. They're saying that the salespeople they've got to deal with, most of them suck. So that's why they say they hate salespeople. But if you met a good one, you're like, damn, man, I want to buy everything off that person. It's like, that's my point. So it's like movers, if they say they hate moving companies because they've been burned by a mover. Okay, people say, well, I, well, I, hate, I hate girls are all trouble. No, you meet a good one. You're good. I got my heart broke. I'm never going to fall in love with again. No, if you fall in love with the right person, you're like, damn, this is the best feeling I've ever had. It's like, come on, man. Like what we got to do is whatever you do, you got to be the very best at it. No matter what they say, that wasn't you. I hate moving companies. With us? Was that me? You, you People break your heart. Did I do it? <laughs> Listen, I wasn't there. I can't speak for them and I'm not him. Okay, but once you get a taste of what we do, the only regret you'll have is that you didn't do everything in this industry with us your entire life. That's the only regret you'll have. Okay, but you won't regret doing business with us. When, matter of fact, when it's done, you're going to, want to write me a check for a little more, for sure. Every time people say, let me tip you. I say, we don't take tips. They say, let me tip you. Let me tip you. Let me tip you. Hey, and another deal is, if a mover does a good job, have people tipped them before? Oh, yeah, all the time. All the time! Tell your freaking guys. Say, guys, listen to me. We charge for the job. If you go out there and you blow their minds today and you take their souls, they're going to tip you. They, they, they may not know that they're going to tip you, but you've done such a good job, they feel like they owe you more. Okay? That would be my deal. Do such a good job today that the client feels that they underpaid. Tell your movers every day, do such a good job that the client feels that they've been underpaid. When you're done moving, I want them to look at you heartbroken, feeling like they've ripped you off because they haven't paid you enough money. That's the key. I love that. I'm making notes left and right. I, make it, I made a note earlier downstairs when we were talking. You said that you have to earn the right to have a direct conversation like you're having right now. Like, you've earned that right. You've proven yourself. I go back to Florida. I have this, this huddle with my team. What's the first step I can take to earn the right to have that exact conversation with Okay. Them? Number one, everything's your fault as the leader, good and bad. So I would say, hey, guys, number one, I just want to tell you, um, I'm saying, let's say you go to an event or you say, guys, hey, first of all, I want to tell you, um, I apologize. Honestly, uh, I went to a, uh, another company this weekend and I saw a level of leadership that honestly was mind blowing to me. And my whole life, I've done better than most. We've got a good company because we do better than most. And honestly, I've been surrounded by a lot of mediocrity, a lot of people who don't care. I'm doing better than them. I do care a lot. But there's a time in which you meet someone or a company and you realize that you're not as good as you think you are and I had that I had that realization this weekend and so I wanted to come to you guys and tell you that I'm sorry and that you guys I'm capable of being such a better leader for you guys and you deserve it all of you deserve a better leader and I've been giving you my best, but I have so much more in me. You know, going into this event this weekend, I thought, you know, one to ten, I was probably a nine. Yeah, I'm doing pretty good, doing better than most. You know what I realized? I'm one to ten, I'm a I'm a two. And maybe my two is better than some people's ten. But when I get to my ten, I'm gonna be dangerous. So I wanna tell all you guys, I'm sorry. Um, I'm not as good as I think I am. Uh, I saw a new level this weekend. I want to bring that level to you guys, okay? So I would like to ask for permission, okay? I'd like to ask all of you for permission for me to positively peer pressure you guys to max out your potential. Would everybody be okay with me? I want you to know where my heart is. I want you to know my intentions is that you guys are the best and you're, you're, you're twos. And your twos may be better than someone else's ten. Okay, because that's how good you guys are. But when you guys get your 10, we're going to take over the world. So I'm going to push to my 10. 
Uh, I want you guys to hold me accountable to this new level of leadership. I want us to be open. I want us to be direct. Um, I also want to be that way with you guys. You know, so I'd like to ask you guys a question. Since I'm going to this new level, would you guys like me to feed you ice cream and make you feel good and treat you like two, three, four, and five-year-olds like most companies do? Or would you guys, guys like me to give you the cold, hard truth, treat you like the badass that I know you guys are? Which one? Badasses. They'll say badasses. And you'll say, all right, let's get started. Rule number one, today we're going to ruin the value of money for people. I want you guys to move everything and do such a good job that people feel like they underpaid. And then you start going into it. You see? Notice the first thing that I did is that I didn't tell them that they hadn't been doing their job good. I told them that I'm sorry and I apologize and that I have been underplaying and that I've been doing better than most, just like a lot of you. And we've been surrounded by mediocrity. So, you know, when you're around a bunch of losers and you're winning, you think you're a winner. But then there's a time where you go meet somebody who's really doing some big winning and you realize like, shit man like I need to wake up and you guys are my family you guys aren't my employees tell them you guys aren't my employees you guys are my fucking team okay and I can't do it without you you know I can fire every one of you guys in here right now and you guys can also fire me every one of you 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 could fire me right now I don't want that I, don't, I know you don't want to get fired either I, I know we all want this to work out we all want to be the best and the only way to make that happen is to build a family and a team. So I want to ask for permission for us to treat each other like family, um, ask for permission to be direct with each other. And if, you know, hey, listen, I don't want any complaining. Okay, somebody's doing something. Okay, let's, let's talk about it. Let's get out in the open. Let's hold each other accountable. Let's fix it. Is that cool? We're not going to whine. We're not going to complain. We're going to challenge each other. We're going to push each other. We're going to make each other better human beings. Okay, how about we take this and, and, and make this more than a job. Who, who, who's, who's okay with that? And then they'll raise their hand and you'll say, what, what do you think that would do for our families? What, what, what kind of person do you think that would bring back to our children and our wives? Yeah. So, uh, so that's what we're going to do is we're going to get more. We're going to hold each other accountable for more. We're going to do more. We're going to make more money. Um, but it isn't always going to be about making more money. It's going to be about being a better person. Every day, I want, of us, I want all of us to get 1% better. And I also want us to hold each other accountable. Can we please make an agreement that we have a goal to make each other 1% better every day and that we will hold each other accountable and the truth is dark. The truth is dark, which means if you're doing something and I know it's not good for you and I know it's not the right thing that you should be doing based on what you told me you wanted in life, that I can shake your ass up and I can hold you accountable as your brother. Okay? Can we, can we do that here? Can we have that kind of relationship? Can we live this kind of life? Can we live to this kind of accountability? And what would our life look like if we did? See, like, this is it, man. This is how I talk to my team every day. This is how I talk to myself. Um, and this is how I think. Listen, anybody that can understand this concept that can do this, and, and you can, okay, because I learned it. You can learn it. But matter of fact, I didn't learn all this by having a really good leader. I actually learned all this by not having this. And I thought, well, if that wasn't working, if I'm not growing my company, well, then why don't we just reverse engineer this bitch? What would grow my company? Well, inspired people, the leader running with the spirit, the leader having a different perspective, the leader being in good shape, the leader having direct conversations every day. And the leader has to not have a double standard. The leader must do what they're asking their team to do. And then do like... <laughs> It's just magical what happens, dude. And it's a compound effect. Where you'll, where you'll be at in a year from now, if you do this every day, where you'll be at in a year from now, I mean, dude, you'll be building leaders that will be building leaders and your whole entire company will be a group of leaders. Uh, there'll be no titles. There'll be no entitlement. Um, there'll be unity. There'll be one team culture. People think culture is like people being nice to each other. Dude, our culture, we're very direct to each other. People that are around here would actually think that we're mean, okay? Because I'm like, I'm like my wife grabbing my love handle, like that was her being good to me. And look at what she triggered. Look at the animal she made by telling me the truth. That's how we create animals in here. Look, look, we're poking at each other every day and exposing weaknesses and holes in front of each other's faces. And people don't like that because they don't like the truth. 
but the truth is the only thing that'll give you the life you want. Okay. So, wow. wow. Yeah. Phenomenal. I don't know how much time we have left here. I have one last question for you and I think we got to roll, but how do we keep that momentum going? You mentioned that for the last however many years you would do fitness, you'd fall off, you know, cycles. I'm guilty of it myself. 11 years. We're just now, we've gone two straight months in this 6 a.m. six pack fitness, you know, aspect to our business. How do we get that momentum to continue and compound like you just said? Feed it. Find people to help you feed it. Everybody in this world needs a coach. I'm not even joking. Okay? Um, in the Bible, whether you believe in God or not, but it says iron sharpens iron. So true. Dull iron, you get dull iron. Sharp as shit iron, you get sharp as shit iron. Like, dude, I, I'm sharp. I make my team sharp. I find people that are crazy like me and I lean into them. I want to know everything they know. I want to know why they do what they do. Um, I want to be around people that take good care of their families. I want to be around people that take good care of their health. I want to be around people that are excited about growing their team, growing their business, growing marketing, growing sales. I want to, I want to be around all this, uh, customer satisfaction, customer retention, uh, reach revenue. I want to be around all this, right? Like I, I want to be around all that. So I find people, listen, just two people, just if, if everybody could just add one or two more people, right? Or, or, or a training system or something to their life. Like it, it, would, it could change everything. Like people just need to plug in to something that they're wanting to become. So right now you guys are on a spree, but really it's not a spree. Okay. You, you, you didn't get lucky. You're intentionally doing these things. Now my question is, is do you love it? Does it make you feel good? Are you liking what's happening? Okay. All right. Do more, do more, do more. Show more, give more, love more, lean in more, become more obsessed, become crazier. Uh, ne next part, bring their families in, bring their families in. Okay. If you're doing it with your team now, right? Six packs, right? Okay. Now the next one you say, all right, guys, w we want the kids and the families to come out too. We want the whole family to you. Oh, not the whole family. No, we want the whole family. Okay. Because your family is important to you. The time that you spend with us, it's super important. You're spending the time away from your family. We want to get to know your families, number one. We want your families to be a part of this culture earlier. I um, mean, Also, we, we want them to be a part of it as well. Like, listen, everything that we're doing, I don't want your wife to watch you enjoy some things at work that she don't get to be a part of. No, dude. No, I want her to know who we are too. I want her and I want the kids to know. I want them all to know. Okay. So like every other week, maybe it's a, a meetup Saturday or meetup Sunday, or I don't know, like you have to make it happen. Every time that I get together with my team, they all have their wives, their kids and everybody. I don't ask for them to bring them. I demand them. Hey, Jake, I'm going to see your wife, right? Tonight, right? Uh, yeah, she, hey, call her ass. Let's go, call her. Well, she said, call her. What's up, Sandy? It's Andy. Listen to me. Jake was telling me some bullshit about you're not going to be coming tonight. First of all, unacceptable. Okay. Unacceptable. We actually like you more than we like Jake. Okay. So let him stay home and do the laundry. Um, and you're coming because we want you to be with us. Okay. Listen, I mean it. It's important that you're here with us. Okay. We don't get to spend enough time with you. We just, you're important to us. We want you to know that we want you here. Okay. Grab the kids, bring whatever. I'll pay for someone to come over and do the laundry. I don't give a shit. I need you here. Dude. When she feels that she's important and a part of this, you know how she'll support him to work for you? Do you know the way that when he's like, hey, babe, see, because listen, let's talk about retention of these movers. Andy, what happens if they quit and move away? Listen, some of the guys are like, hey, man, you know, uh, hey, babe, I got this guy. He said he'll pay me twice as much as we're making now with Wade. You know what I mean? If I'll go work for him in his business. She's like, you're thinking about leaving Wade? He's like, yeah, we're going to make more money. She's like, I don't give a fuck. Wade? He's, who we hang out with, with our kids and our family? You're going to leave him? Fuck is your problem. Why don't you work harder for Wade and increase your value and get more money there from Wade? Okay, babe, moving somewhere else, you're not even thinking about us now. We like where you work. Wade is the only person that's ever included us to be a part of your job. You know, no one else even has known my name. Any place you've worked, they never even known me or your kids' names. This is the first company that actually cared about us, and you're thinking about leaving them for money? 
It's the stupidest thing I've ever heard you say. See? See, listen to me. This is this isn't a game. This is a this is a master strategy. And it's it's called the retention strategy of heaven on earth, giving people a good opportunity to make money. Explaining to people that listen, Wade, you don't make more money if you don't increase your value. Money made, money paid. You got to do one or two things, okay? You got to do your job better, and I can pay you more because clients will pay us more for a better job. Or you need to figure out how to make me more money. If you can make me more money, I'll pay you more money out of the money I'm making, right? But listen, hey, I love you, okay? But if you want to make more money, you got to increase your value. And I know that you're worth it. You just got to help me find it, okay? Listen, I love your family. I love your kids. I love you. You know, we got a great life together, okay? I know a lot of people who make more money, Wade, they're not happy, okay? Right? There's times where you probably made more money than you're making now and you weren't happy. Okay, you guys are happy, right? Okay, well, being happy is priceless. So let's not give up the happiness, okay? Let's try to, to together figure out how you can bring more value to the company, okay? Whatever it is, so I can figure out how to pay you more. Dude, now we're now now we're talking about having a company. And matter of fact, just anybody watching this, like, this isn't a family. I mean, this isn't a company now. This is a family. Dude, this is called the inner circle of one of the greatest companies that will ever be existed. Anybody that can pull this off. And, and we're doing it. We have this. This is, this is, I'm basically explaining my company to you. And I'm explaining how you could replicate what I'm doing. And, dude, yeah, it's hard. Yeah, it's uncomfortable. Yeah, it takes time for people to buy in. Yeah, sure, the first couple times the family shows up, they feel awkward and weird. Well, it's because no one's ever included them. So it takes time. And by the way, women, um, you know, if most of men, I'm guessing, are movers, right? Most of them. Most, most of them. Okay. Um, women have a very good intuition about who their husbands should be around. And every woman wants their husbands around a good influence. Hmm. And if it came down to your husband, to a husband being able to make more money at a job where she was unsure or uncertain what kind of influence he would be under or him making less with you, knowing the influence that you provide with him and making him a better man and the standards you demand that he holds, she'll always protect you. So now you can take care of him as doing the job, but also you know that when she, she's and then he's not at work and she's there with him, she's running and rooting for you, right? Yeah. Nobody does this. So. No. Andy, I'm excited to work with you. We've got the training platform that we're partnering up on. We've got the Moving Titan Retreat in March. You're going to be doing a full day of sales training. And so be kicking. I can't wait, man. I'm so fired up and ready to get back to work. Yeah, right guys. Now. And by the way, if you're not there, like you're an idiot. I mean, if you're in the moving space and you're not at your retreat. You're, you're an absolute idiot. I mean, we're going to be there live. And if you've got, hey, I always say this to you. If you've gotten any value from this podcast, if you're like, dude, like, let me ask you a question. You've paid for training before, right? Okay. Think about the, yeah, but, but think about the information you just got. What did it cost you? It was free. Do you think the information you just got could make you money? Well, if somebody that you pay nothing for can give you value that makes you a lot of money, imagine if you actually paid for the pay training. I mean, dude, because I, I mean, I shared 1% of what we do. So we'll be bringing a lot of it to the retreat. So anybody that's not got their ticket, um, I think they need to reach out to you if they're in the moving space. Is that yeah, correct? absolutely. Yeah, reach out to me. You can find me on, on Instagram. You can email me. I've said it a million times on here before. What's so your Instagram? It's at Wade Swickle. It's just my first and last name. There you go. So, okay, yeah. cool. That way, if anybody's watching this, you're in a moving space, you want to grow a business, make sure you're hooking up with him. Yeah, we're taking over. Andy's infiltrating. The Army is infiltrating. It's going to go. be awesome. Let's kill it. Tighten up. Hey guys, I just want to tell you you're the true one percenters. You made it till the end of the video. Do me a favor, share it with the friend that wants to go to another level. Make sure you like the video, comment below so I know who you are. Set your notifications and then subscribe to the channel. We got daily sales training videos dropping. I'll see you soon.